And uh, today the theme is have victory over all sins with God's help. Have victory over all sins with God's help. Okay, how to have victory over all sins. That is a problem of many Christians. And also in the past too, for myself, I thought it was so hard to overcome all sins. And now God has given me the key how to overcome all sins, not by my strength, but by God's help, that I have confidence to overcome all sins. Not that I'm perfect. We still have sinful thoughts. Those are sins. We still have sinful thoughts. And um, sometimes we, you know, also we will have uh, negative emotions. The point is how how we can how can we handle the negative thinking and the sins immediately in a few seconds as soon as they appear uh, you know we can never be perfect because sinful thoughts just come out uh, into our mind from time to time because of our sinful nature and uh, because we all have the sinful nature so the sinful thought will just come up. The point is, can we handle it, manage it immediately? Or negative, negative emotions that we are unhappy, we uh, have pressure, tension, uh, negative thinking, uh, feeling pessimistic, uh, feeling no, no strength. All these are sins and um, so if we have these problems, uh, the point is how we can overcome the sins immediately. Okay? Um, okay, so the theme is have victory over all sins with God's help. It's possible. Everyone can do it. Everyone can do it. If we really see that sins are destructive and really trust in God and submit to God and it's possible and I have done it I'm not perfect I still have sinful thoughts and emotions but then I um, overcome the sinful thoughts immediately so have victory over all sins with God's help okay now the first thing uh, we must understand the reason why many people have problem overcoming sin is that they think that it's okay to sin and then they ask God to forgive them after they sin and then they ask God to forgive them now it's true when we are truly repentant God will forgive us but many people didn't realize that there are consequences of sin that's very important the reason why many people don't overcome the sins immediately because they think that they you know they just uh, repent and then God will forgive them so the sin is over now that is not true the sin still has this consequence in John 5 14 Jesus said to the man who was healed of 38 years of sickness he said see you are well again stop sinning or something worse may happen to you something worse so what something worse will happen uh, it could be health problem that he could have the sickness again. Relationship with people. When we yell at people, even though we ask God to forgive us and ask the person to forgive us, still the relationship will be affected. And sometimes uh, it's hard to restore relationship after, after some uh, uh, very strong yelling. And then the relationship with God is also affected. Uh, and then the family relationship for instance, if someone fights with a husband or wife, even though he asks for he or she asks for forgiveness afterwards, still there are consequences that affect the marriage and the future. Uh, you know, if we are having a job and then we sin while have, having the job, we can be fired, and the future can be affected, and the trust of people. The people can lose the trust of, of us if we continue sin. And also the reputation. 
sometimes even legal problems. So there are different kinds of consequences and also giving the devil a foothold. So we must understand that all sins have consequences and that would motivate people to really take care of the sins because when we sin, then Satan will steal from us. Okay, and sowing to the flesh will reap destruction. Galatians 6, 8 For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap destruction. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. So the Bible says very clearly, if he sows to the flesh, we, if we follow our flesh, that means follow our sinful nature, then they will reap destruction. That destruction can come to our life. If a person sows to his flesh, that he follows his flesh, follow his sinful nature, follow his anger, follow his lust. And even if he asks Jesus to forgive him, then his life will still face destruction. Like David, that God said that the sword will not depart from your family because of your sin, even though he got the forgiveness of God. And then if people don't repent of the sins and don't take care of the sins, it will be more serious. For instance, even some Christians, at the same time they believe in Jesus, but at the same time they're controlled by lust or greed of money or other kinds of sin or, or uh, problem in a relationship with people that they, they don't treat people well and then uh, they continue to reap the destruction in their life. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. If we sow to the Spirit, follow the Holy Spirit, we'll reap everlasting life. And the worst scenario if someone doesn't follow God is that he can go into hell. If, if he doesn't repent of his sin at all, if he follow his sin and doesn't repent, then he can have uh, eternal damnation. Because when he says he believes in Jesus, but actually he doesn't really believe when he continues to re, uh, uh, sin without repentance, then he doesn't really have uh, living faith in God. Okay, sin can destroy our relationship with God, our relationship with people, our marriage, job, ministry, and reputation. There are a number of pastors who lose the ministry or lost the trust of their members after they sin. And our future and our whole life, God has a wonderful plan in our life. If we continue to sin, it can affect our whole life. We cannot enter God's perfect plan that will go lower and lower. You know, originally God has a perfect plan for us. If we continue to sin, we'll go down more and more. And God's plan, uh, we'll, we'll lose the plan. And then the worst scenario is losing eternal life. And sometimes there's no turning back when we sin. Uh, for instance, a pastor serving God, and then he commits a sin, a serious sin he might not be able, be able to turn back and become a pastor again. Sometimes he can, sometimes he cannot. It depends on the situation. When sometimes, when a person ruins his marriage, sometimes there is no point, no way to restore the marriage. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not possible. So we need to understand that sinning doesn't always have a turning point, a turning a, a chance to turn back. Sometimes there is, sometimes there is no. And then also, um, even when uh, people can turn back, it's still sometimes they lose much. So sinning is very serious. We must understand that and everyone should understand that and, and repent of our sins and and follow God faithfully and that's how we can have blessings from God all the time. And God can execute judgment when we sin. Ananias and Sapphira, they uh, sold their property and they gave part of the money to Peter. And then Peter asked him, you know, uh, uh, you know, that whether this is all the money and then they said yes. And then Peter said to him, and Aeneas, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price 
of the land for yourself. You have not lied to men but to God. Then Ananias died and later Sapphira died also. So God can execute judgment on us when we sin. Now this is in the New Testament after the descending of the Holy Spirit. So it, you know, it applies to the New Testament too. That uh, so we don't want to offend God. It means that sin really offends God. When we sin, we really make God unhappy, and God can punish us if we continue to sin without repentance. And also, sinning will give the devil a foothold. The devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. He would not have mercy on us. He wants to destroy everything, especially people who are serving God. He wants to destroy the ministry. So we understand when we sin, we don't earn anything. We lose everything. So how do we overcome sin? First, we talk about the motivation, and this motivation applies to to many things. Uh, first, God loves us very much. He loves us greatly. And then we are very precious because God loves us. And thirdly, when we overcome sins and obey God, we'll be greatly blessed by God and our lives will go to a high level. So there is always blessing when we obey God and overcome sins. And then if we sin, there will be great destruction to ourselves. We can lose God's plan and even salvation. Uh, in the worst scenario, if the person totally doesn't repent at all. Now, we are saved by grace through faith, but faith must always produce good works. If faith doesn't produce good works, then there is something wrong with the faith. So these four motivation, four points of motivation applies to everything. Uh, applies to handling our negative thinking and emotions and uh, and for going into uh, to ministry or to serve God, uh, it applies. For instance, uh, to serve God. God loves us greatly and we are precious. And when we serve God faithfully, God will bless us greatly. And then if we don't serve God at all. Now, serving God doesn't mean necessarily being a minister. Uh, any way that we bless Jesus' brothers, like in Matthew 25, the third parable of the sheep, that they bless the little brothers of Jesus, then they are serving God. Anything we do for God is serving God. When people don't serve God at all, there will be destruction to their life. Now some people say, is that true? Yes, it's true because he has no compassion. He's not following God's uh, moving in his heart and that, you know, then he's not following God totally. He will lose the perfect plan of God. Now, when we overcome sins, it's very important to understand that. The first step is true repentance and asking Jesus to forgive us, trusting in Jesus' forgiveness. It's very important. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that He'll forgive us all our sins when we confess our sins. And now, we must understand that confessing our sin means that we really... Uh, we really have a contrite heart, a heart saying, I'm really sorry of my sins. It's not just verbally saying, oh, I'm sorry for my sins, but continue to sin. But we say, yes, I know that sins are destructive to myself and to other people. It's destructive to God's plan. I, I, I really want to repent. I hate sins. Uh, God has taught me this. The key to overcoming sin is hate sins. To hate sins because sins are destructive. Sins are more destructive than cancer. So we want to hate sins. We dislike sins. We don't want any part with, uh, with sins. And then God will forgive a repentant heart. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. This, O oh God, you will not despise. God will not despise a a broken heart, that the heart is really sad because of a sin, a contrite heart, a heart that is really repentant, that God will not despise. So if we are truly repentant, God is very happy. Now, but many people, they don't have true repentance. And they just 
say it verbally. We need to learn to say, yes, Lord, I know that sins are bad. Now, one way to think about it is like this. Sometimes when we think of our sins, we think it's not so serious. But when we think of other people treating us the same way as we treat them. Like we say, we yell at people, it's not so serious. Then when people yell at us, how does it make you feel? It makes you feel unhappy. It makes you feel hurt. Or someone despises you, doesn't uh, think that you are important, and say things that, that uh, cause you to feel bad about yourself, then you feel bad. So this, are, this shows that sins are destructive. So we really need to come to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry I caused the person to feel so bad. It's a serious sin. I, please forgive my sins. I'm sorry for my sins. And the Bible promises that, God promises that in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Through Jesus Christ, He has the power to help us overcome any kind of sin. And the five steps to victory, I've talked about these five steps that it can be applied to different uh, ways we over, you know, to overcoming different problems. First, aware of any sin, any sinful thought. Second, believe that it's in destructive. The sin or anything negative uh, is destructive. And then apply biblical principles. What does the Bible tell me to do? And then pray to have forgiveness and strength. And then choose to obey immediately. Now the key, God gave me the key to overcome sin is the moment we notice that we are sinning, immediately we say no to the sin. Immediately. We replace a sinful thought with godly thoughts. We can overcome sins by stopping the sinful thoughts while they are still in our mind before they become action. Okay, let me use an illustration. If we are angry with someone, someone has mistreated us, we're angry with the person. Now, it's the, the other person who has sinned first, but that is his fault. When he has sinned, it doesn't mean that I have the right to be angry at him. And if I continue to have anger, then I'm sinning. So as soon as I notice that I really hate the person, I have anger toward the person, immediately I say, Lord, please forgive me. If I continue to have anger on him, it's going to hurt me. It's going to hurt my attitude toward him. It's going to hurt my peace, take away my peace. It's going to hurt my ministry. So I'm going to say no to the hatred. Immediately I say, Lord, for your sake and for my sake. Because if we overcome sin right at that time, we have victory and God is very happy with us. Uh, the sooner we take care of our sins, the, uh, the happier God is with us. Or Someone, if someone has lust, a man look at a woman and has lust. And then a lot of times the man will continue to look at a woman and, and have uh, lustful thoughts about a woman. And this, he will, it will cause him to go into sin. And even sometimes uh, Christians or even pastors, why did they enter adultery? Because first they have the sinful thought. And every day they build on it. And every day when, when they look at the woman, they continue to have lust on the woman. And then there is a chance comes and that, that the man you know, does something to the woman and the woman accepts it. And then the man continue on to, uh, and then gradually uh, commit a, adultery. And that's how sin develops. So when we realize we have the sinful thought, we want to stop it. Now, some people say, I just have the thought, I'm not going to do anything. Still, that is destructive because it will take away our peace. It will take away, uh, it will uh, influence the relationship with God. And God will not be pleased with us if we continue to have the lust. So if there, is, there are people who are watching pornography regularly or look at women or look at men and have lustful thoughts, we want to say, this is destructive. Immediately we say, Lord, forgive me. Please help me.
to replace the thought of thankfulness to God. God, you are so wonderful. You move in my heart to try to move me, uh, to, uh, uh, to move my heart so that I will repent. Lord, please forgive me. I want to repent. I want to turn away from the sin. I don't want the sin to continue to destroy me. So that is victory, that we stop the sin immediately before it comes into action and before the sinful thought continue. Now also, the problem of many people is that they don't regard some of the sins as sins. For instance, depression. People don't think that depression is sin. Depression basically is not thanking God for things and complaining to God and also not trusting in God. So it's sin and it's going to destroy our life uh, and our relationship with God. And so when we notice we have depression, we are unhappy, then we say, why am I unhappy? Because someone mistreated me. And then I'll say, okay, that person has done something wrong to me, but that is his problem. If he yelled at me, it is his problem. Does it mean I have to take what he gives me? Do I have to eat the garbage he gives me? I don't have to eat it because if I eat it, it will hurt me. So I'm going to say no. And I say, it doesn't matter if you yell at me. Now, that's very important. Some people think it's very, it doesn't matter very much if he yells at me. But we need to say it doesn't matter because he cannot take away God's blessings from me if I don't let him influence me. Even when he has said something bad to me, I just disregard it. I can you know, respond to him in a polite way and say, uh, uh, okay, I'll try to pay attention to that if that is a problem. And uh, I'll try to improve. And then, and then we, we don't take the person's words. And then we say, I choose to think about God's goodness, that God treasures me. God wants to lift up my life. And when I follow God and obey God, God is very happy. So I choose to say, I'm a precious person. God loves me. So what he said to me cannot take away God's blessings. I don't have to take his garbage. Then we overcome the sin right away. So I hope you learned this. This is very important that we overcome the sinful thoughts immediately. As soon as we notice that we have this sinful thought in us. Okay, now here I have uh, some comparison. Manage our thoughts to overcome sins. So when we have thoughts that cause us sins, I have a X here to show that this is wrong. This side is wrong. This side is right. So when I hate the person, I don't want to forgive him. I don't want to see him. If we have thoughts like this, then we'll say this is not biblical. Because if I don't forgive him, then God will not forgive me either. And then if I don't, if I hate the person, it's going to ruin my spiritual life. So we say hating him and not forgiving will hurt me. Blessing him will bless myself. So if I bless him, it will bless myself. And if I hate him, it will hurt me myself. So I'm going to change his thoughts. Now, can we change his thought? Certainly we can if we want to, but many people don't have the enough motivation to do it. But if we say, again, the four points I just talked about, hope you remember, God loves me, I'm precious. If I obey God, there will be blessings. If I disobey God, if I sin, there will be destruction. So if I continue to hate Him, it's going to hurt me. So I choose to forgive Him, I choose to say it doesn't matter. I choose to bless him, say nice things to him. This is victory. Now, if we live like that, the relationship with God will grow stronger and stronger. And then God will give us more uh, inspiration, direction, guidance for us how to, uh, how to use my life for God, how to enter God's perfect plan. That is what I've noticed. You know, when I first experienced the Holy Spirit, uh, one time I shared with someone about my experience, but that person was very unhappy and she was angry with me. And then she hung up the phone. 
And after she hang up the phone, I pray and I found that I lost my joy. And the Holy Spirit prompted me and said, I have to handle this. And I said, how can I handle it? So I thought of uh, calling her back and then tell her, I'm sorry if I make you feel unhappy. Now, it's not wrong for me to share with her my experience. But if I make her unhappy, I'm sorry about that. So I said that. But she was still angry and she hung up the phone again. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, now you have done it, then let go. Don't worry. And then I let go and I pray the joy of the Lord comes back to me. I've done what I need to do. So the Holy Spirit said to me, from now on, any problem comes to you, you handle it like that. Any influence of people, any negative words from people, or any sinful thought, immediately take care of that. And the more I do it, the more I find that I have more joy, more strength, and more guidance from God, that God guides me and opens the way for me to, to serve God more. And the more we obey God, the holiness, uh, you know, the first there is the righteousness, the righteous rule of God, and then our action will also, you know, our righteousness will also be our, our gown, our uh, robe, and it will be our glory. So, and then God will be pleased with us and bless us. So I hope we all learn this to say sins are destructive. So I hate sin and I don't want sin to destroy my life. And when I obey God in any small way, God is very happy. So this is the key to overcoming sins. Okay, someone says my wife is troublesome. I don't want to listen to her and spend time with her. So this is someone's sinful thoughts. And then we can change it and say I want to listen to my wife and handle our problems. I should build my marriage and then God is happy with me when I do that. So instead of following our, our, uh, uh, our, our impulse to sin, to dislike the wife, we want to follow the guidance of the Bible, that guidance of the Holy Spirit. I want to listen to my wife, you know, if whether I've done something wrong, how I can improve the relationship, and I will handle the problems with her, then the marriage would be, would be uh, protected and uh, that you know, the relationship will be improved and it will, bless, it will bring blessing to me and to my family. And then if someone, he wants to yell at people when he's angry, and then my, the choice is handling my anger is pleasing to God. God will be very happy with me when I handle my anger. Okay, and then I have lust after that woman. I enjoy that lust. And then we'll say, lust will destroy my life. Purity brings God's blessing. So I'm going to, uh, uh, instead of thinking about the woman, I will think about God. I will thank God. I will rejoice in the Lord. So I have strength to overcome the sins. Okay, here, after I sin, I will I would just ask God to forgive me after that I can sin again. Now, if a person has this thought that, okay, I'll just keep sinning and then keep asking God to forgive me, if I have that thought, that is a sinful thought because that's taking advantage of God's forgiveness. Even when God forgives me, sins bring destruction. Sins bring destruction. When I sin willfully, I'm not really repentant. So I need to convince myself if I continue to sin, it's not true repentance and it will bring destruction. So I want to really say no to sin. I really hate sin. Nobody sees my sinful thought. People think I'm a holy Christian. Sometimes we say, nobody sees my sinful thought. It's okay. Nobody sees it. But we know that God sees my sinful thoughts. He knows what kind of Christian I am. He knows whether I am a, a good Christian from the inside out or whether I'm just putting a, you know, outside of a good Christian, but inside is not a good Christian. And many Christians sin and nothing bad happened to them, so it's okay to sin. Now, sometimes people say, okay, they sin, they commit adultery, and they still live on, and it seems that uh, there's nothing bad happening to them. And, and then the thought from God is, God will surely reward good Christians. Nobody can escape God's eyes. Even though it doesn't seem that he's 
suffering any punishment from God, but God will eventually punish him. And sometimes the punishment uh, is not obvious. Sometimes he loses, he has lost his faith and lost his pu uh, peace and lost his strength and lost his motivation to serve God. And we don't see that. And, but we must realize that we cannot escape from God's eyes. When we sin, there's always destruction. There's always destruction. There's no way to run away from sins. And one way to encourage ourselves is if we improve by 1% a day, we can improve much in 100 days. 